Coming up next on Rugby Wrap-Up, and scroll with Next Level's Ryan Ginty. Brought to you by Friends of the British Council. Everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy at the Fantasy Sports Network, Studio 34 in New York City, talking rugby. And we are talking college rugby, and we're talking small college rugby, and we're talking with a man that knows everything about the college game, Mr. Ryan Ginty of Next Level Rugby. Ryan, welcome. Hey, what's up, Matt? Pleasure to be here. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be involved in some collegiate rugby from time to time. I was definitely involved in a lot of collegiate rugby. And just for the folks at home, you're on our AFIA Sports Training Group Monitor. All right, bring us up to speed on what Enscro is for the folks at home and tell us uh, what, what you were doing with them. So Enscro is the National Small College Rugby Organization. It's run by Steve Cohen. It is all across the United States. And what it does is it provides schools of under 4,500 students the opportunity to compete for a national championship by providing great resources to them and, and creating pathways for these players to succeed and to develop as rugby players. So is it part of Enscro without the R in it? Is there like an Enscro for all of college sports and then rugby, the one with the R in it, falls underneath that umbrella? Or is this an, an entity to its, unto its own? So it is primarily an entity unto its own. But it is, you know, there is an MOU with USA Rugby. So they do work in conjunction by USA Rugby, but they are not governed by USA Rugby. Um, and, at, and as I said, at the heart of every decision that they make, they make these decisions based on what's best for the players and the teams competing in Enscrow. All right. So bring us up to speed on what you were doing with this latest competition. And I was down in Austin, Texas, Round Rock, Texas, at the Austin Elite Facility where they play all their games, and Enscro was holding their first ever regional all-star tournament. It was five teams that came all the way in. There was a Lone Star team from Texas, a South team from the South, a Mid-South team, a Pac Coast team, and the Northeast Rhinos team as well, too. So all five regions put together teams. Most of them, except for one, got together, trained before, had practices, really developed a structure and a game plan into what they wanted to do. And then all the teams ended up coming in Wednesday night, got a training on Thursday, and then they competed across five matches over three days, starting on Friday morning, playing on Saturday, and then with the championship taking place on Sunday. So was this a question of, uh, hey, who wants to hook? And then look around and... No, no, it was actually, there were there were a lot of these players were picked because of, of their performances throughout the season and also at tryouts, right? So in, in, in certain instances, there were multiple positions that multiple players for each position, you know, that came in and you had to compete for it. Um, so it wasn't, it, it's everybody got to play, which was a great thing, but it was about identifying talent, you know, putting people in the right places. And, and the biggest thing, and from what I heard from every kid that was out there was the opportunity to have high level coaching you know, at this stuff. Like Josh Smith coached the Northeast team, and I sat in with Kareem Afifi, Ronan from uh, Salve Regina, and also Dale out of uh, Maine. And the resounding response from all the kids there were, I've never had coaching like this in my life. Because it's the unfortunate reality of collegiate rugby is that finding good coaches in collegiate rugby, it's hard. Not all programs have it. They may have a coach. That coach may be early on in their coaching career, may not have had as much experience, but this was a great opportunity for all these players to, to get a touch. I mean, Josh just won a national championship with Mystic River and is going to be the next major league rugby coach in Boston. Yeah. And, and you know what? I, to go back to that. Back in the 1840s when I played at the University of Buffalo, we didn't have coach. We, we, we had five guys that we voted as selectors and ran practices. And, you know, God forbid if you had a, a, second, a, a third semester senior that was the coach, that was, that was, the, that was the big thing, right? It's a great way it's changed. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's 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 the biggest thing, right? Like it's how do how do we how do we change the game? Um and I was told uh Kareem was talking to me about he works under Rob Conway up at Boston College and Rob was part of the Leinster system forever and he said, you know, they went out tried to train up the players, get them going, and then they realized after a while it just wasn't working. 
what they need to do is they need to work on the coaches and help working and training the coaches and get that going. Um, and so I think that's something you're going to start to see uh, and grow start to do really work with coaches, um, but also work with the players. And I, and I will say that the one thing, not just with getting these players, good coaching and good tips and everything, but this was truly about talent identification. And I mean, we had some superstars and some players that, that are going to the next level, all pun intended. Like these guys are going to be going to the next level. Two of them from the Northeast, two locks from the Northeast, Austin elite management was talking to them directly after the championship game. And, you know, they're, they're talking about going out there this summer and being involved in that program and that setup. So, I mean, it's pretty awesome stuff that happened this past weekend, you know, and a great opportunities for these college players. That's awesome. And Ryan, you saw a whole bunch of this because you were a one man show putting on the coverage, which is just crazy. You were, you were a man in the cameras, you're a man in the switchboard, you're doing everything. Folks don't understand the fact that, that's the reality here uh, to do these kinds of things. And you're a good man for, for swallowing that, that nut and doing it. Did you see anybody that stood out in particular that might be on the Eagle radar? I tell you one player, he stood out to me. I saw him at the Jesuit cup, got my first experience with them. And it's Darrell Williams, uh, Williams, D A R R E L at gmail.com. If anybody, any coaches are out there looking for him, but I mean, he's a wing that is absolutely gangbusters. And it's an interesting story because he's from the University of San Francisco, but he actually goes to the Community College of San Francisco. And you may be wondering, well, what's he doing playing? Hey, you what's know, he doing playing? University? Well, thank you, Matt. I'm glad you asked. Well, so this is this is what makes Enscrow smart, right? Is that they used logical thinking in here. And if you have a combined enrollment of under 4,500 students between the community college and the University of San Francisco, and both schools and their uh, compliance officers sign off on it, they allow the kids to go and play there. So, I mean, it's, it's a great opportunity, and it's giving students like Darrell Williams, for instance, wouldn't be playing university rugby anywhere. He wouldn't be developing. He wouldn't be Crazy. getting to, be, to the next level. And now he has this opportunity to where he comes in, he plays with USF, gets selected to play on the Pac Coast team, and then ends up winning tournament MVP. And, and now... I hope that uh, there's some coaches that are out there looking at him. I know Rob Gary up at AIC is actually looking at him. So uh, that's great. Make sure if, if you're looking for a wing, Darrell Williams, a wing. So he's uh, he's a wing. Okay. Does he have any? Does he have a foot? Uh, he does have a foot. Um, I didn't get to see him drop it on because he didn't need to because he was able to hit some good angles and really slice and dice up the defense uh, this past weekend. But uh, at Jesuit Cup, I did see him. He did. I, I believe he dropped a nice little grubber that he regathered and scored a, a pretty good try. That's great stuff. Love hearing stories like that, and it's and that's that's great. Putting the kid on a map through rugby is is just phenomenal, Mister Mister Ginty. We are out of time, but I want to thank you for your labors of love and career. Uh, I understand it fully as we're going through it together. But you, nobody is second to you, my friend, and I appreciate what you're doing, Matt. We're just gluttons for punishment. And on that note. On behalf of Mr. Ryan Ginty of Next Level Rugby, which you need to watch and check out and follow all the time, I'm Matt McCarthy for Rugby Wrap-Up here at the Fantasy Sports Network Studio 34 after we're talking Enscrow signing off.